Boa tarde, pessoal. Aqui é Carlos Siqueira, MVP da em Tampa, Flórida, dando prosseguimento ao nosso encontro mensal, né, que é o MVP Office Hours. É, é, um, é um programa patrocinado pela Salesforce, mas criado pelos MVPs para a comunidade. Tá? Então, não é, é, não é uma coisa assim que a Salesforce determina o que é feito o que não é feito. O evento ele é em português, a gente tem colaboração de outras pessoas. Hoje, por exemplo, no call, nós temos duas pessoas que não falam português, que é a Jack Treviso, que ela é uma das originais do MVP. Uh, Jack, please introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. My name is Jackie Trevieso. I am out of the Carolinas, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, been an MVP for a handful of years, and I've been using Salesforce uh, for about uh, 12 years. Cool. <laughs> and I focus, I focus in the um, sales cloud. Um, so that, that's where I do all my work is sales cloud. Ok, thank you. Obrigado, Jack. Nós temos também o Igor Androsov, que ele é da Ucrânia, mas trabalha aqui em Tampa. Igor, could you please introduce yourself? Hello, uh, my name is Igor Androsov. I'm based, as Carlos mentioned, in Tampa Bay, Florida, as he is. Um, I am a, a technical architect. Um, I've been in Salesforce ecosystem for 10 plus years uh, or so. And uh, I focus mainly, my strengths are in uh, mobile, uh, part of uh, Salesforce, building mobile apps, uh, service cloud, live agent, uh, various types around service cloud related um, uh, development and architecture and sales cloud as well and community cloud. Ok, thank you, uh, Igor. Obrigado, Igor. Então, pessoal, é como eu falei, é, é um evento em português, mas a gente assim, a gente tem que se botar assim, mão para cima, né? De ter um pessoal aí que, que, que não fala o nosso idioma e em vez de estar ali tá trabalhando neles, eles se dedicam, tiram um, 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 um tempo aí para ajudar a gente. Isso é, 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 é a beleza do movimento Ohana, né? Então, o que, é que a gente faz aqui? Quais são os eventos? Né? A gente que coloca todos os eventos aqui da Salesforce. Você clicar aqui nesse admin salesforce.com all events, são todos os eventos que a Salesforce faz oficialmente ao redor do mundo, tá? O próximo é o calendário de eventos de Customer Success, que é uma outra parte da Salesforce, tá? De eventos patrocinados por eles. E o mais importante para a gente, que é esse aqui, próximos eventos Dreaming. Ou seja, o que é um evento Dreaming? É um evento da comunidade. Como a gente coloca aqui, é feito pela comunidade para a comunidade. Então, esses são eventos que a Salesforce ela pode mandar uma ou duas pessoas para fazer uma apresentação, mas não existe um patrocínio financeiro, por existe um patrocínio técnico, mas não existe um patrocínio de infraestrutura, de nada disso. Então, é uma coisa que as pessoas fazem por si próprias. Né? Então, o que é está que rolando? Aqui, agora em dezembro, começa agora no sábado, tem um Inoida, que é o India Dream. Dia 6, tem o Brisbane, na Austrália, que está aqui, não está nem escreveu isso aqui, não deve, deve ser carioca que escreveu isso, né, cara? Austrália, olha só. É, em Brisbane. Em março, temos três eventos. Um em Londres, que é o London Calling. 20, temos Salt Lake City, que é o chamado... No estado de Utah, que é o chamado Snow Force. 21, temos Atlanta, USA, Saltice Dream. Eu já fui a dois desses, é muito bom. Em abril, temos, 12 de abril, tem uma cidade de Málaga, na Espanha, o Dream Olé. Todo ano eles mudam de cidade. Tá? Em junho, teremos, dia 13 de junho, tem Austin, Texas. Eu fui esse ano, onde foi lançado o Lightning Championship. Excelente evento. 14, temos dois. Um no Canadá, chamado Ben Dreaming, Benf Dreaming, e o outro na, na Holanda, em Amsterdã, que é o chamado Year Dreaming. Tá? Em julho, opa, em julho temos um outro, outra vez temos outro em outra parte do Canadá, que é o Canadá True North Dreaming. 31 de julho tem o em Oregon, em Porto, um Oregon chamado Forceland. Em agosto tem o um Chicago, que é o USA Midwest Dreaming, que assim é um dos maiores. Aliás, é um dos eventos que foi criado porque a pessoa não tinha como ir para o Dream Force. E o Eric Jashfield, ele foi que criou o US esse Midwest Dream aí, porque ele não podia ir, e se tornou assim, um evento bem grande. E no final do verão, final do verão aqui dos Estados Unidos, seria setembro, mais ou menos, 
é, vai ter um novo anunciado que é o chamado North Call Dream, que é no norte da Carolina, da, 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 da Califórnia. Ok? Então, vamos a umas regrinhas básicas que a gente coloca aqui para o evento. Né? Aqui. É, ele acontece toda a última quinta-feira do mês. A próxima vai ser 31 de janeiro. Deixa eu perguntar um negócio. Jack and, and, and uh, Igor, am I going too fast? No, I think it's okay. No, okay, you're fine. So, okay, yeah. I'm pretty much telling you what you both know exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. What, uh, Carlos, one, one uh, um, addition there, I think uh, maybe worth mentioning since you're going over dreaming events. There's yeah. also a Japan dreaming scheduled for January 26th of 2019. Oh, great. Hold on. Did you know that? So I, I look into this, the link here I couldn't find. So January, right? Yeah, they, they plan on January. Um, it, I think that's kind of like the, they set the dates and I'm not sure uh, since I'm, I'm not there right now. I don't know what, uh, whether that's how it's going to happen, but that's the plan. No, it, it, this is very important because, uh, believe me or not, Brazil, especially Sao Paulo, has the second largest population of Japanese people outside Tokyo. Yeah, great. So, yep. well, which day, what, what's the date? Uh, the 26th of January. And what's the city? Uh, it's going to be Tokyo, uh, a Tokyo area, somewhere around Tokyo. Okay, do you know the name of the event? Uh, it's called Japan Dreaming. Excellent, thank you very much, Igor. Appreciate that. Pessoal, vocês viram aí, pessoal que está de São Paulo, né? É, é um lance legal, porque de repente tem, a gente nunca sabe, né? Quem está quem, quem no Brasil que, que, que tem interesse, né? Fazer uma coisa dessa, mas legal, legal isso aí. Thanks, thanks again, uh, Igor. Então vamos voltar aqui no próximo slide. Né? Então, a gente colocou aqui esses eventos. A próxima coisa são mais ou menos as regrinhas que a gente faz. Né? Última quinta-feira do mês, a próxima será dia 31 de janeiro. Por quê? Porque a última quinta-feira de novembro, de dezembro, não tem condição. Né? Natal é ano novo. Né? Uh, Jackie and, and Igor, I'm pretty much telling that our next event is going to be January 31st because uh, December, the last Thursday of December, you're not going to find people in Brazil willing to attend any events, I can guarantee you that. So that's why we're going to skip that. Uh, Para registrar, está aqui o, o link. Isso é uma discussão aberta de perguntas e respostas. É um painel feito por, pelos MVPs, mas isso não significa que é só MVP que participa. Uh, são abordagens, dicas, recursos, recomendações. A gente recomenda também que você use o, o, o recurso de answers na comunidade, né? na comunidade do Trailblazer. Tá? Sucesso Community para solução de códigos, automação específica, revisões passo a passo, ou qualquer coisa, mas qualquer coisa mais detalhada. Isso está sendo gravado e depois disso, depois que terminar o evento, eu vou pegar o vídeo e isso é compartilhado, não só compartilhado o vídeo, como esse PowerPoint Presentation que a gente está fazendo aqui, é compartilhado na comunidade, MVP oficial as português, no YouTube e no Twitter aqui para todo mundo, de gente que não tem acesso, não tem como, não tem tempo, poder fazer. Tá? É, por favor, desliguem seu microfone, eu coloque em mute. Né? E para fazer uma pergunta, sim, você levante sua mão no chat e faz aqui no comentário, né? peça para falar, é, apresente-se ao grupo quando você for falar pela primeira vez. Todas as pessoas são bem-vindas para compartilhar suas experiências, né? a, a filosofia não existe pergunta fácil ou difícil. E use o chat para poder recursos, tipo links, né? websites, assim, e todos participamos. Tá? Com isso, vamos para o próximo slide. Jackie and Igor pretty much gave them the, you know, the, the house rules, how to, to, to attend, how to, to mention things. And we're going to open the chat here to see if people have uh, uh, any, any, any questions. Pessoal, André, 
Mariane, alguma pergunta, algum comentário, alguma coisa que vocês gostariam de, 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 de compartilhar, que seja relacionada né, com, 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 com a comunidade em português? André? André? Mariane, você, Oi. alguma pergunta, algum comentário? Não, não, por enquanto não. Tá, tudo bem, então. Então, deixa eu tentar voltar aqui no André. André, pra você... também. Estou te ouvindo, estou te ouvindo. Para mim, tudo tá. ok, por enquanto. Então, me diga o seguinte, André, tem você e a Mariane, a gente está aqui com, com, com a Jack, o Igor e, e eu. Vamos conversar, o que, é que vocês têm para colocar assim, a nível de, de seus força, né? quais os planos de vocês, o que, é que vocês gostariam de comentar, porque sabe, a gente tem uma hora aí, tem, ou seja, tem mais 45 minutos e é bom usar esse tempo aí para alguma coisa que a gente possa compartilhar, que vocês achem que, que vale a pena, alguma pergunta, sei lá. Bom, eu tenho uma pergunta que, na verdade, não é diretamente sobre MVP, sobre eventos. Tá, tá. Deixa eu falar um pouco antes de um pouquinho de mim. Eu eu tô no ecossistema faz quase cinco anos e eu tô na terceira consultoria de Salesforce e porque eu acabei insistindo em ficar aqui em Porto Alegre, no Rio Grande do Sul. Então, eu tô abri a terceira. A primeira era a Cloud2B, que é uma das conhecidas de São Paulo. Depois, ela acabou a filial aqui no Sul e eu participei da abertura de mais uma, que acabou desistindo, e eu estou na segunda agora aqui, abrindo os caminhos. Então, eu sou responsável técnico por toda a parte de seus esforços. Então, hoje eu faço a pré-venda, a arquitetura do que vai ser feito, escopo e depois gerencio a entrega. E a entrega eu ando com as pessoas aqui na volta. Você okay. já viu que eu estou tentando buscar recursos aqui no Rio Grande do Sul, é quase inexistente. É inexistente até agora. Você até me ajudou ali compartilhando o link de que a gente está buscando gente aqui em Porto Alegre. E eu tenho filial em Florianópolis, também é difícil achar. Eu tá, então deixa eu traduzir, que... deixa eu traduzir é. isso para o Igor e para a Jack. Jack, Igor, André, he's a, like a technical lead living in the extreme, extreme south, south of Brazil. And he's pretty much sharing that he's on his third uh, life, I would say, uh, that, or employment or, or a gig related to Salesforce. He's been on the ecosystem for over five years, and he's starting to share the struggle that has been for him uh, to find uh, professionals in southeast of Brazil. And he's trying to reach out to, to the other areas of the country. Correct, Andrea? Yep, right. Okay. And are you looking for new employment or are you looking for networking opportunities? I'm looking for new employment that okay. knows a little bit about uh, Salesforce or has been uh, Salesforce admin. Every, everybody that knows a little bit about Salesforce will be fine, but I don't can't find anyone in our city. We are in the main city of our state, the principal city and we are not uh, finding anyone and it works the same in the other state that's nearby us it's, it's up on us that's santa catarina uh, we have our other main office there and we couldn't find anyone that could work with us just just know a little bit about salesforce it's really hard to find <laughs> okay. yeah jack so, am i am i understanding that you're you're not finding a lot of companies that use salesforce who are looking to hire in your local region, is that the? No, yeah. no, no, Jackie. He's okay. looking for people, professionals. He's not looking for employment for himself. He's looking for people, professionals. He's looking to hire. hire yeah, he's yeah, looking to hire, to hire yes. people for his team. Okay. All right, so if I were in your shoes, uh, some of the things that I would do is, um, if there is a local community group, user group or developer group, I would join those. And participate. I would use is if LinkedIn is used in your area. I would yeah, definitely use lot. LinkedIn. Yeah, we use a lot of. Uh, I mean, we put uh, some uh, hirements in LinkedIn. 
but we couldn't find anyone. It's real. We uh, stayed uh, lived there open for one month, and anybody appeared that knows a little bit about uh, Salesforce. Okay. It's really strange uh, mm -hmm. for me. <laughs> okay. So I guess some of the other things that I would try, um, and I've never been to Brazil or that region at all, so I don't I don't know if these things would apply, but I would I would try also um, Twitter. I would also try posting to community. There yeah. is a jobs group. Yeah, yeah. At community, I already have done this, and okay. uh, I think uh, Carlos had, had has a group there, a specific group there for Brazilian jobs, something. And we, yeah. uh, we put them there, in there, but nobody answered the call. <laughs> uh, so I, I would I would make one recommendation, or or uh, depending uh, depending on the organization that you're working with, whether you are an independent uh, consultant or you employed by the company in Brazil. Um, I think in this situation, it's typically tough, right? Until you actually start gaining some momentum and. There, there will be you know, user groups that they may not be in your city even. Uh, and in those kind of regions, it's kind of unreached region, right? Um, then I would uh, propose for your organization to open up uh, opportunity for remote work. And then yeah. you have a lot more open pool of uh, remote uh, individuals and you could specify like if the, let's say Portuguese was a requirement, uh, right? Then. Uh, that would be part of this sort of like, yes, you need to speak Portuguese. If you could do with English, obviously you have a lot bigger pool of people that would uh, may work remotely as uh, either independent consultants uh, or maybe there's even partners that you could uh, reach out to uh, that would work with you and provide the resources needed. Yeah, we are a partner. We are a silver partner from Salesforce called Tech6. And we work, uh, we already work with remote people, but the thing is uh, some companies uh, are uh, asking for us, uh, some guys that work inside the company for one day a week or one day in a month because they have a lot of things to have to need to be done and they want to be wor work with a person inside the company. It's for us, it's really fine because uh, in our region, it's normal. They want to see you working, and I'm very uh, used to work with remote work. It's, it works really fine with Salesforce, but some companies don't don't get it. So yeah. we are trying to find someone that really can uh, represent us there. Andrea, let me just make a comment here. I'm going to say first in English and Portuguese as well. The, t the issue, uh, Igor and Jackie, is that uh, while in the U.S. The, the practice of remote is kind of well adopted, it's not fully, it's a comp some companies do, some companies don't. Uh, in Brazil, it, it's, it's pretty much, or I would say for outside of U.S., pretty much in Brazil, Latin America, it's a cultural thing of trust, of, you know, and that's one of the major things of people doing not allowing you know remote work would you agree with that andrea yeah 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 for, for our company it's okay but the problems are our customers that don't like this kind of work i don't know why i think it's uh it's a legacy from erp and they have to be there with the server and the back the storage and everything else and yeah, and it's difficult to convince them that it's okay to be remote because salesforce is on cloud, don't need to be there to make the things done. Yeah, I, I understand that it's certainly a cultural aspect and uh, it has been like this in, in some other areas I've had a uh, privilege to work at. Um, it is changing slowly in different areas, like in Asia Pac, it's also kind of similar thing. Japan, for example, has a cultural stuff that you need to be in the office, that's kind of a thing. Um, but it's, it's changing, uh, you know, the last decade or so they've been, uh, changing with the cloud, uh, being in place. And I think it probably will come to Brazil at some point as well, if not now, uh, uh just simply the pool of resources is, is, uh, spread around the globe and to be able to effectively deliver on these projects, uh, partners as well as organizations, uh, would have to learn how to tap into that pool of resources. Uh, yeah, uh, Andrea, 
Eu vi que tinha sido, foram criados agora uns grupos novos no Brasil. Eu vi que tem um do Rio, tem um de Vitória. O de Vitória começou essa semana. Eu vi alguma coisa que tinha algo para ser oficializado em Porto Alegre. Você está por dentro? Não, eu sei que tem só... Tinha um grupo que é o pessoal da Dell, tá? que tinha criado um grupo aqui, fez um encontro ano passado e nunca mais aconteceu nada. Então... É esse que eu estou falando. Esse que eu estou falando é, é, um, é, é um tipo oficial. Deixa eu ver aqui. Você tá, continua vendo aqui a minha tela? Sim, sim. Tá, deixa eu ver aqui um, um segundo. Jack? Yes. Uh, do you know, can you pass me, if you can, here to chat, or just tell me what, if you remember the link where you find all the, the global groups, because I remember seeing something about uh, some other areas of Brazil. Are you talking about all the user group meetings, the community group meetings? Yeah, the community groups, yes. Okay, two seconds. Yeah, I saw the, this, this new one, Vitória, from Vitória yeah. and Belo Horizonte, I think. Yeah, so, yes. And Rio, but Porto Alegre, I didn't see anything about. Those are officials. Yeah. Yeah, I saw a group. They are trying to pick some people, but they work for, from, for Dell, just, just for Dell. But it's really funny because we, I have, we have a lot of companies that are using Salesforce and they don't have any admin. <laughs> Yeah. Or they are shy. <laughs> Obrigado, Jackie. And you're welcome. But I am just trying to find, I was just doing a search on that link I just sent you. What are some of, some of the other regional or city names that we would look up? Because Brazil? Yeah, wait a minute. Brazil, Brazil, Brazil Indiana, community. which I didn't know existed. Which one? Brazil, Indiana. That's not you. No, no, that's not. That Brazil is, that's the state of Indiana. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Didn't know that existed. Yeah, let me, let me try to log in here and say find a group. Okay, you see here Brazil, South America. And when you say South America, yeah. we have this one, Belo Horizonte. Porto Alegre. Porto Alegre, you see? I told you that. Yeah, uh, but I, I, th I think in, I, I'm this in that one. I received this Trailblazer community groups and I get in, but I think don't don't have anyone. Do you see this? Join Vili? Yeah. Join okay, Vili, this I know is the thing. But this is the thing. There is a difference between you have these things in here and have a, actually a real a real one. For instance, if I go here and I say, let's say Rio de Janeiro, okay, there is this group called Rio de Janeiro. I can go in there on the success community and I can find the group, okay? Mm -hmm. You see that, that's nice, it shows, you see it shows Rio de Janeiro in <laughs> nice. there, that's very nice, okay? But now, if you go for the other, or if you go to the other ones that I was trying to, yeah. you know, Rio de Janeiro. Well, I received the, this link and I get inside and, oh, well, Porto Alegre, but don't have anyone inside it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you know, it, it, so it, it, this is the problem. It exists in here, but yeah. it's not officially in there because when you try to click in there. Yeah. So there's two, okay, so there's two things that I think we need to understand. What we're looking at on Carlos's screen right, screen right now, those are meetings that are um, scheduled. Yeah. So if, if the other ones that we looked up were blank, if they don't have anything scheduled yet, that's going to be blank. So one of the things that you need to do is join these groups on this website that he's... Yeah, he's I already given. have done this. Yeah, okay. I already have done this. And then the other thing that you, I would recommend is that you go into the Trailblazer community, which used to be success.salesforce.com, and yeah. join the chatter groups there. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, that is the thing. That's the thing, yeah. <laughs> Jackie, because this, like uh, this Porto Alegre here, I can try to log in in there, you know, and I mean, I try to join that. There's nothing me for, for joining because they don't have it. They don't, they have, don't have a chatter yeah. group. They don't exist at success. Exactly. That is the problem. Now, if you go, if you go back to, to the other ones, like uh, we, the ones that we already know, the new ones here. Uh, 
One, one of the comments I would make here, though, is that I think for a lot of these groups, uh, since this is a new site and new uh, way that's been changed recently, like before Dreamforce or so, uh, over the course of this year, before that, all of these groups were managing their meetups and meetings during the meetup app or some other yeah, yeah. event yeah, meetups, applications. Yeah, yeah right? they just it's recently uh, went to... Uh, right, and, and that may be... And it may be uh, a situation where this group particularly, maybe they not, don't meet as much or as often, and they just have not set up one yet. Uh, but if you may be going in their meetup uh, page and see what they've done in the past, you could see their history and, and maybe more information about who is the leader and how to get in touch with them and maybe see the, the uh, you know, group membership as well, yeah, how many yeah. people they have. I tried there. I found one guy that works for Dell. That we have a Dell uh, matrix here, and but the the guy never answered me. Answered me, and they don't have they don't have done any any other meetings and other than meetups. I'm I was signing if it happens anything anything there, but it's was only one meet. Yeah, so uh, come on, you're just <laughs> As I said, the Rio de Janeiro group exists, as, as uh, uh, Jackie suggests, exists on the chatter. But the other two, like the other ones, uh, uh, Porto Alegre and Joinville, they don't exist as a group see on the chatter. They only exist in there for, for the case of, you know, sending emails and stuff like that, which is fine, but it doesn't really add value because this is where we take places here. So this one, Rio de Janeiro, we posted yesterday, somebody from Sao Paulo, posting there about the MVP nominations. I went in there and I put it, the things about our MVP of the hours and stuff like that. So, André, eu acho que você tem mais é que forçar a barra, cara, chegar junto desse pessoal, tá? E, e tentar pegar informação com eles aí, por que que não tá rolando, para você conseguir... É... Ok, so... There is, there is a Porto group i just put a link in there but there's yeah. only one member and it does not look like anybody is managing this but it's group. from porto portugal is it from portugal. portugal yeah they have a city there oh this one's different okay yeah yeah it's it's yeah. happy pier porto alegre here <laughs> yeah so, yeah, I, so i find i find that kind of a common theme um i looked same uh thing for example there's a couple of groups that are in in uh eastern Bloc, like a uh, russian group and salesforce and ukrainian and belarus uh, groups exist but there's really maybe one or two members and no activity for over two years or so so it's uh that kind of hit and miss kind of situation when you kind of an outskirts out of a salesforce ecosystem but uh, that could be an opportunity for you maybe to start a group like this and and try to see um you know if other people out there just not you know not being very active but if there was a, a community growing in in your area they might come together uh, and you may be able to find them that way yeah, yeah let, me, let me go back here vou fazer aqui o seguinte uh, uh, Jackie, do you think it's okay to, to mention Holly here? Sure. Okay. Uh, André, o que eu vou fazer é o seguinte, tá? Dá para ver aqui a minha tela? Sim. É assim que se escreve, André, Joinville, é, né? Isso. I just dropped two links in chat as well. Great. So, André, if you wanted to start your own group, there's a link there. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh. I see here, Jackie. Yeah, this one was the very first one. Yeah, Goiania. They, this is another one. Goiania exists, okay? But they have, they are not active at all. I can show you here that they are not active because we go in there, I posted, 
And the last time that they have an activity, I don't remember they ever putting anything in there. Hold on. Você sabe alguma coisa, oh, oh, André? Você já ouviu falar do pessoal de Goiânia? Eu só vi que existia agora, porque a Pari começaram a pipocar alguns, né? Antes era só era o Central, que virou São Paulo. É, e agora tem esses outros aí, só que eu nunca olhei dentro deles se tinha alguma coisa. Pois é, aí eu vou te mostrar aqui para você ter uma ideia. Tá? Deixa eu ver aqui em grupos. Carlos, I send you a link to the meetup that happened. Aqui, olha, a última vez, a última vez que teve um, um pôster oficial deles foi dia 12 de março. Yeah. You see, Jack, the last time they, they have official post on yeah, their yeah. group not being shared was exactly in March of this year. I mean, you know, that's the Goiânia that you send here. Yes. So at this point, you're, you have, you have an opportunity to jump in there and say, hey, you know, this, this group doesn't appear to have been active. Is there something that I can do to take the reins and bring people together and, you know, rejuvenate the group? I don't know if that group is close enough to you, Andre, or if you would want to start your own, talk to some other people within your organization and maybe... Um, co-lead a group together. So I guess the only solution is if there isn't a group or there isn't an active group and you want an active group, raise your hand and say, hey, how can I, how can I change this? Yeah. Yeah. Because all of the groups are run by volunteers. Yeah, because they have a, a passion and, and a drive and an interest to bring people together and share knowledge yeah. and support each other. So if that's something that you know you're interested in doing, I highly recommend it. I will try to reach the Joinville group and see what they are doing, or I, maybe we could uh, open a South Brazilian group that will be more stronger than only a Porto Alegre group. I think could be like the, uh, could be a, uh, we could make that like this a South Brazilian group. Or is it made to be in a city or something like that? Eu acho, eu acho, o, o André, eu acho que fica, fica mais fácil é você fazer por cidade, porque aqui, por exemplo, aqui nos Estados Unidos, você tem por cidade, você tem aqui um yeah. Tampa, Florida, onde é que eu tô? Uma mm -hmm. hora de Tampa, você tem o de Orlando, a 30 minutos de Orlando, você tem o, 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 o de Daytona Beach, Sim. Mais uma hora e pouco você tem o de Jacksonville, então é mais fácil você criar um a nível de cidade do que a nível de estado, porque a nível de estado fica meio complicado uma pessoa. Vamos dizer, é um estado grande como é Minas Gerais ou Porto Alegre ou Amazonas, que você pode dirigir cinco, seis horas para chegar de um, de um ponto ao outro. Sim, sim. É que, é que eu estou pensando como não tem, a coisa não está andando, de repente concentrar depois abrir, que nem era o, o sucesso português, a gente acabou virando São Paulo, né? que antes era o geral. E Isso. assim foi abrindo outras. Né? De repente cria um sul do Brasil. Daí juntar Paraná, Santa Catarina e, Porto, e Rio Grande do Sul. Daí depois ainda, assim, eu acho, ainda assim, eu acho que era forçar a barra. Eu acho que deveria é. ter cada um da... Da sua cidade yeah, do que... I agree, I agree, but I think they would be stronger if I could be more, with more people. <laughs> Jackie, Jackie and Igor, uh, Andres is, 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 is suggesting, considering uh, to have one for by the state. And I'm telling them that uh, at least here in the US, you have a group that's close as one hour from each other, like a Tampa and Orlando. So in, in Brazil, when you have a big state to have a try to have one group for two or three states, I think yeah. that might be a that little... Be, so it would be tough. I mean, I think Carlos is correct. Uh, and I think that's obviously depends on activity, right? If you, if you are really spread out and you don't have a lot of activity in your city in the area, and you really have maybe one or two customers that actively using Salesforce, the group would be fairly thin. Uh, or it might be difficult to put the meetings together. And then again, to people from other state or from even north or south of your state might be a long travel. Uh, so, I mean, at this point, if you want to do a state group, I would say that probably going to be kind of a combination of a real group and a virtual group so that you'll have people from other parts 
don't have to fly into your meetings essentially. So yeah, exactly. I mean, we like this weekend they're having one this big India event in there. I know people they're not gonna be able to uh, to go because they say Carlos, it's like a six hour, seven, eight hours driving to go from point A to point B. Here in Tampa, we have the both sides of Tampa. Tampa is a Tampa Bay. So we have the side of land and you have the other side across the water. And believe me, you have 25 users. And I don't remember ever me and, and, and Igor be able to have 25 people in there. If we had like a six or seven, we are like a celebrating because people just don't go, you know, just don't go. So imagine doing this, uh, you know, trying to do by the States. I'm not sure if that would work. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I just think... was thinking because it will be stronger just to start. Then after that, we can split. What's this? Just an idea. You there was always... just an idea because of this, so be stronger. Yeah. You can always start out big and then yeah, yeah, then, that, that's that know, with, a, with a larger ge geography. The other thing that you need to take into consideration is the location, the facility where you would hold your meetings if they're in person. They really they need to be easy to get to. So highways, freeways, you know, streets. They need to have free parking. I don't know if that's if that's something that that you have there or if you have paid parking. Um, they just need to be easily accessible. Once I moved my meetings from an area of Charlotte that was one-way streets, paid parking, you know, a parking deck to a, a location that was right off our interstate, free parking, smaller building, easy in out, my, um, my attendance increased, was consistent. First of all, we've got a, a group that constantly shows up and we hold our meetings once a month in person. I was able to get, you know, by word of mouth, new new people who were attending. Um, and then in addition to that, we're always the same day, same time, same location of the month. So people can put it on their calendars and plan for it. Those things are important because it's going to drive your attendance as well. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think uh, that the idea was just to start, just to see if it has any movement and any uh, addiction to it because I don't know the, the size of the, the community here in Porto Alegre and Rio Grande do Sul. I really don't know because I don't see any clients, many clients uh, participating in the success community. I just know one or two from here and I know that has a lot more than this. That, that's the idea just to start and after that we split or we have done something different. So once you get up and running and you get your community group, your chatter group established, um, some of the things that I've done is I've actually searched for companies on LinkedIn and then try to go find them on Twitter and send them a direct message, letting them know we've got this new group and yeah. here's how you can join and we'd love to have you. So you might have to do a little bit of legwork on the front end to get some momentum started. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Andrea, uh, yeah. it, it, it's, it's good that Jack is mentioning that because I had a presentation here exactly on that topic. I'm going to try to, to do, go real quick here. And the presentation is, is can you see the screen? Yes. Um, yes. Okay. And this is what's done by an MVP out of uh, Ireland. And it's pretty much how the Trailblazer community can grow your career. Okay. And she pretty much pinpoints some of the things that's, uh, you know, it's like a best practice experience. Uh, that's her, Lauren. She's from, from Ireland, she's an MVP. She made this presentation uh, beginning of this month in, in, in the event called Florida Dream in Orlando here in Florida. And as Jack was just saying something about talking LinkedIn and, and, and getting people the word, Network, that's a lot of people. Okay, somebody here has a red hair. I don't know who should, who's that person is. <laughs> that was my pink purple phase now, or my, my pink phase now I've gone purple. Yeah, you oh. see the big, you see big, big dummy right there? That would be me. The tall guy in the back, you're not a big dummy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just big. So, uma coisa, André, é network, André e Mariane, é extremamente importante, cara, você tá na internet. 
sacou? Você, você propagar, compartilhar a informação. Sou neto? Carlos. Go ahead. Você Eu vejo que chegou alguém mais. Cleiton Alves, seja bem-vindo. Cara, desculpa a demora aí, a todos aí, que eu peguei um trânsito aqui em São Paulo. Não, tudo bem. Pessoal, o Cleiton trabalha, o Cleiton trabalha na Deloitte, no Brasil. É, aí, tá batalhando aí. Gente boa. Uh, Igor and Jack Clayton works for Deloitte in Brazil and he's been there, you know, being involved in the community as well. So, as I said, networking, networking, networking. Where's the other slides? Uh, what is Ohana? O que é o Ohana? Né? Is, the, is the Salesforce community any user, admin, or developer? Salesforce, we look out and we help each other. Salesforce Ohana. Ou seja, é uma família, todo mundo se ajuda, né? todo mundo se promove. Ohana is a deep seated support system, we strive to improve the world around us, friends in every city. 24 by 7, ou seja, é, é, um, é um grupo forte, né? E que tenta ajudar as pessoas ao redor do mundo. Você encontra amigos em todos os lugares, em todas as cidades, e é praticamente 24 by 7, ou seja, 24 horas por dia, 7 dias da semana, o pessoal está ajudando. Tá? E é como eu já falei antes, os Dreams Events são extremamente importantes. É, não tem marketing, não é uma coisa que a Salesforce faz, é uma coisa que a comunidade faz para a comunidade. E aqui os grupos, né? community groups. Tem mais de 900 grupos no, no, no mundo inteiro. Tem na América do Norte, América, América do Sul, EMA, que seria o Middle East, APEC, que seria a Ásia, grupos virtuais. E tem, e tem mercado para todo mundo, para admin, para developers, usuários. Women in Tech, que seria as mulheres em tecnologia. Nós for Profit, que seria as ONGs e pessoal de marketing. E é completamente free. E para quem gosta, tem uma cervejinha. <laughs> tá, então, Carlos, so... one, of, one of the things that I would say about the Ohana, and like I, I had, when I introduced myself, I've been within this ecosystem uh, since, well, they started groups in what, 07, 08? So 10 years. Um, I would say that community groups, networking, all of these events has really removed my fear of vulnerability because I know I'm in a safe place when I have a question. And, and it, I think when people realize that they don't have to know everything, they just need to know somebody who might know somebody who might know somebody who can help them with it. Um, because we all have different experiences based on the jobs that we do and the functions that we use within Salesforce. It's, it doesn't mean that we use everything. So I think that once people understand that that community is an opportunity to remove the fear of vulnerability then things just completely open up for you totally agree pessoal é o que ela é o que ela falou a pessoa você vai conhece alguém você se apresenta a alguém e por aí você começa a a, 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 a se envolver na comunidade eu pelo menos comecei comecei aqui em Tampa e não tinha ninguém, e o ano passado eu conheci o, o Igor, e a partir de janeiro desse ano, o Igor e eu começamos a, a fazer muita coisa aí junto. Igor, I'm telling them that I started in 2016 in Tampa, I didn't know anybody, and we start to see each other around, and beginning of this year, we start to do things together. Yeah, I, I mean, that's the, that's the time I, I remember we were doing uh, some developer group meetups and, and you showed up in, in uh, one of them um, and kept coming back for, the, for some of our dev groups. Yeah, pessoal, como a Jack falou, there's no such a thing as a business card. You made it access to the community, ask Force is your best friend, hashtag Salesforce Ohana, Trailblazer Community Ohana. Don't be afraid to ask somebody for help. The community love it. Join the fun. GIFs and friends, ou seja, tem que botar a cara no mundo. Ninguém vai bater na sua porta, falar assim, vem participar, sabe? Pode até aparecer, mas pode ser devido à fonte errada. Então você tem que realmente chegar e chegar lá, gente, eu quero participar, eu quero me envolver, eu quero aprender. Porque é assim que, 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 que você aprende, que você faz conexões, você 
consegue aprender seu esforço, você consegue é, arrumar um trabalho melhor, né? How to be a rock star to your boss, ou seja, você participar da comunidade, parte de community, né? De answer, você participar, perguntar, tá? É você colaborar. O que é você colaborar? Pô, é você perguntar. A gente está fazendo as coisas aqui agora. Isso aqui é um evento que a gente está fazendo, sabe? Temos temos cinco, seis pessoas agora no evento. O que, que acontece? Acaba o evento eu pego, vou postar isso na, 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 na internet, Pô, se o Brasil tem, sei lá, mil pessoas que trabalham com seus forças estão interessadas, as pessoas vão lá e veem. Sabe? Então, você tem que, tem que se participar. Você vê as coisas, o benefício de você usar a App Exchange para você aprender. Você tem outras aplicações lá, algumas são pagas, outras não. Tem uma área da community, que é ideias, você fala assim, poxa, eu queria que o seu esforço fizesse assim, assim, assado. Você vai para o Ideas e você vai e você vê uma ideia que você não, não existe ainda, você vai criar a ideia. Ou você pesquisa por uma solução, não encontra, ou encontra alguém lá que tem uma ideia, você vai lá e vota para que essa ideia possa se tornar uma realidade. É assim que, que, que as coisas que o pessoal da seu esforço cria funções novas. E aqui, acho que está terminando aqui, porque é uma apresentação rápida. Então, é mais ou menos isso. Jack, comments on this. Uh, let's see here. I, I don't have comments on anything. Um, uh, hmm. join, join groups, create groups, meet people. Don't be afraid to introduce yourself. <coughs> um, like Carlos was saying that, uh, you know, he started out with the Tampa group and then Igor said, was with the... Tampa Group, funny thing is, I was one of the original co-founders of the Tampa Group. And now I know people all across the world. And I know that I can call on people and ask them questions, um, ask them for recommendations, resources, and they know that they can do the same thing of me. So um, get out there and do your networking. Great. Well, Jack, the only time that we're going to be in the same group if is you move back to Tampa, because I'm not moving to North Carolina. <laughs> I don't know. North Carolina is pretty beautiful. I know it is, but it's too cold for me. <laughs> yeah. So, essa é a ideia, gente. Quem mais? Deixa eu ver se tem mais alguém aqui no call. Tem o Clayton, Marilene, não tá mais. Clayton, algum comentário, alguma coisa, pergunta que você tenha a fazer, algo que você queira participar aí? É, pelo que eu vi, vocês estão falando bastante de no engajamento da galera é, nas redes mostrar a cara para poder aprender, poder ensinar, é, colaborar, né? Levar a sério o nome da Johanna, né? Se eu fosse uma família. E é isso. É, eu sempre pergunto para você das coisas e você me responde, me ajuda, dando dicas. E queria te agradecer publicamente por essas, por essas sua ajuda. E, e o, fa o fato é esse mesmo. Você tem, sempre tem que estar disposto a ajudar as pessoas. É, à medida que você ajuda, você aprende mais e mais, né? É, a, a situação, é como a gente comentou aqui, a, a, o, o, o ponto inicial foi o André dizendo que o André está em Porto Alegre e ele trabalha para um, 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 um parceiro da Seus Forças e tem uma dificuldade enorme de encontrar pessoal capacitado. Então, a gente começou a ver que existem dois grupos, um em Porto Alegre e Joinville, que apesar de existirem no papel, eles não existem na comunidade do Xera, na, na Trailblazer, como existe a comunidade portuguesa, a comunidade do Rio, Vitória, São Paulo, Goiânia e tal. E a gente está com outra, uma outra, está com a, a Jack Treviso, que é uma, é uma MVP daqui da, da, da Carolina do Norte. A gente está com o Igor Androsov, que é um, um líder de grupo aqui de Tampa. A gente está, assim, então, trocando ideias para saber como é que o André pode fazer para ele poder difundir isso aí. Né? Foi por isso que eu fiz essa outra apresentação sim, aí, e, né, os slides, mostrando quais são as coisas que a gente acha que tem que ser feitas né, para poder aí ele atrair gente, não só pra, porque ele precisa de gente para trabalhar para ele, como também é uma mão lava o pessoas lava o rosto. Né? Ô, Carlos, o problema do Brasil é que as pessoas não levam muito a sério é, algumas coisas. É, algumas okay. querem... Dá, dá para você dizer isso em inglês? Porque se eu disser, alguém vai falar que eu estou de implicância com o Brasil. <risos> Não, o próprio inglês é ruim, eu não vou nem, me, não vou, vou nem arriscar, cara. Eu, ok, modo... eu digo então. Translate Jack, Jack yeah. and Igor. I asked him to translate that for English. He said that he's not comfortable in English. I'm going to do it. And André, you correct yeah. me. 
You yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. Well, Andrea, can you say it in English? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they are saying that uh, Brazilian people are not committed with the things. That I think that's true. I, we have some problems in Florianópolis. That is an island, a really beautiful island with really, really beautiful beaches. For one buck more, they leave your job and, oh, bye. See you soon. I will, say, I will sell uh, others, other things for one buck more. Yeah, uh, so there's no, what you there's no loyalty. And, and, the reason, and the reason, Jackie and Igor, that I didn't want to say anything myself because, uh, you know, cultures, you know, so I'm not in Brazil. I don't want anybody to go in there and say, oh, he's not even in Brazil. He doesn't know the reality in Brazil. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh, Carlos. Sim, diga. Hey. E, continuando, acho que também é muito a questão da cultura do Brasil, lá na Deloitte eu falo pra galera, galera, vamos participar, vamos se engajar mais na comunidade da Salesforce aí, é, ajudar as pessoas, é, e quando você encontra uma ou outra pessoa para poder se engajar, essas pessoas estão interessadas em algo mais, né, não tem aquele espírito de ajuda, não quer ajudar mesmo por ajudar, por amor é, ou paixão em ajudar, né e, e quando você acha pessoas que são capacitadas, a, a, algumas são, são arrogantes, etc. Né? Então, a gente encontra esse problema. Eu acho que também é uma sugestão. Esse encontro seu deveria acontecer, um, tem como acontecer mais de uma vez um mês, não? Ou é, ou é padrão para todos os MVP? <risos> Cara, eu vou, eu vou te responder isso em, em, em português, mas deixa eu primeiro responder em inglês, tá? Uh, Jack e Igor, uh, Clayton is asking... They pretty much is, I put here, resistência cultural. It's a cultural resistance for people to get involved, for the agenda. But I can guarantee you, if you go in there and say, hey, we're going to have a free swag and you have a beer at the end, everybody's going to show up. And that's not exactly what drives people to get involved. But that's another subject. He's asking me why we don't have the MVP of Seattle's Portuguese more often. Well, uh, the reason is that we had like a 21 people that registered today and only five show up, meaning myself, Igor, that's here in the US, is not Brazilian, Jack is here in the US, is not, Brazil, not Brazilian, so we have a two or three people from Brazil out of the 21 that registered. There is a problem in that. There is a problem in that. There's not a lot that I can do it. You know, I put myself available to make it, but I, you know, we don't, you just don't have a quorum for people to do it. If you for once a month, People don't show up. If we have a only, uh, if we have every two weeks, I don't think people's gonna show up again. But I can put here on the agenda. Okay, so um, it, it's a very valid question, and driving attendance is always a big challenge for any anything that we try to do. Um, to the the question of or to the statement about after after work, people are just done with their jobs and they want to go home and they're not committed to continuing to learn and all that. I know that the Brazilian people know how to have a party. <laughs> so I think that if you turn your user groups into little parties where people are excited about it and you make it, you know, you add some flair to it, music, whatever it takes to, to entice people to come, because I think for every region, every city, it's a little bit different. You have to figure out what is, is good for your group, what's good for your audience. Um, to Carlos's point about the MVP office hours Portuguese only having having a lot of RSVPs, but only a few people come to, you know, to, to dial in. We sometimes have the same issue with with, or I should call it an experience, the same type of experience with the US um, callers, the, the US calls. And we hold our calls twice a month, the first and third Friday of the month. You are welcome to dial into those calls as well. Um, and if Carlos is on, maybe he could translate Portuguese, um, but it is, it is an English-based call. Um, the way that I look at it is we could, have, we could have 100 people RSVP, but if I have one or two people who call in who want to talk and have questions and we problem solve, that, that works for me because I know that I'm helping somebody um, either solve a problem or giving them resources. So as long as we've got something to talk about, I'm all for it. And, and Jackie, that's exactly the way that I made it. That as exactly when I meet here with the Igor, sometimes it's just 
myself, ego, and a second person, and guess what? A third person, guess what? That person has the benefit of two guys in there trying to help. We, okay. have, that's, we have exactly the same thing. The last MVP of the hours here, we have for the very first time for any MVP history, Portuguese, EMA, US, we have a CTA that was very helpful. Oh, oh, Carlos. Excuse me? Traduz a, 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 maior, a maior parte que ela falou que eu não entendi. A sua parte não, que o que ela estava dizendo, o que ela estava dizendo é que às vezes ela pode ter, mesmo no MVP oficial aqui em inglês, às vezes tem 100 pessoas que, que se registram e não comparecem. Mas que na opinião dela, se uma pessoa ou duas pessoas somente comparecerem, está ótimo porque você não conta, você não, você não qualifica o evento como sucesso pela quantidade de pessoas, mas pela qualidade do que se é discutido. É certo, ela está certíssima, verdade. Mas eu, eu sempre falo isso, eu sempre falo isso nos meus posts. Jack, I'm just telling him that uh, uh, our philosophy, yours, I, I believe in mine, and ego, and most of the people leading this engagement is that we don't measure the success for the, the amount of people that show up, but the quality of content that is discussed in that. If you have one people, two people, it doesn't matter. As long as we share things, and we, most of the times, myself, I live an event like this, learning a lot, learning way more than when I got into the event. Absolutely, we all learn, and it doesn't matter how long we've been in the ecosystem. We're always learning something because Salesforce is constantly changing. Yeah, I agree with you. That is that is the benefit of um, collaborative nature of some of these events and and uh, participating in these events. I sometimes go in on an MVP hour and listen in uh, on the conversation. Um, and as an architect, I. I may have little to add or maybe a lot. It depends on the questions people ask, but I still listen and learn uh, that could be some use cases of Salesforce that might be discussing some automations that maybe I'm not too familiar with. So it's always a learning experience, uh, no matter how senior or junior you are in the ecosystem. Uh, and that is one of the wonderful parts of being part of the community, uh, community groups and participating even in the virtual events and, and, and physical events is to have that you know, collaboration, learning experience, and also uh, building a network of people that you can ask questions about um, things when you actually having run into problems, uh, or, or you need maybe some quick answers of, of something you, you struggle with at particular projects you are in. Uh, that could be Salesforce configuration, it could be Apex code, it could be anything, right? So Trailblazer community is definitely a, a first stop uh, well, actually, I'd say, you know, Twitter, um, ask, sell, ask force, uh, I think, uh, is, is the place where people are asking questions. And also the uh, Trailblazer community is certainly uh, uh, great resources. Okay, uh, Igor and Jackie, we are on the time. Any final words, any final comments? It's been a pleasure speaking to everybody today. I hope that we have encouraged you to take some steps to uh, increase and participate in your network and hopefully start some user groups, uh, community groups in your local area. If you need, if you want to talk about starting the group, if you need suggestions or recommendations, you are more than welcome to reach out at any time. You can find me on, um, on Twitter at Jackie Force. Okay, Igor. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, being invited to this, uh, even though without speaking Portuguese. Uh, and hopefully we'll help, uh, you know, at least somebody on this uh, call to do something uh, or potentially take some actions to the, uh, start a group, or join a group. Certainly if you have questions, uh, you can find uh, me also on Trailblazer Community uh, or on Twitter. Ok, André e Clayton, é, ambos disseram exatamente o que eu pensava. É, ficaram muito felizes de participar aqui. Né, tão contentes, apesar de não falarem o idioma, é, é isso que é, é a beleza né, da, da Ohana, de a gente se ajudar uns aos outros, e ambos se colocam à disposição para ajudar. É, vocês, Clayton ou André, algum fim, comentário final para que a gente possa encerrar? Sim, eu quero agradecer vocês três por seu tempo, e eu acho que na próxima vez eu tenho algumas perguntas boas sobre Salesforce, porque, como você disse antes, you, you uh, Salesforce is really big. You have learned every time that you talk with other, and we have every time we have some doubts about something and some documents that are not well written or writing. And yeah, Andrewson, thank you. Thank okay, you for obrigado, André. Clayton, algum comentário final? 
É isso aí, eu cheguei um pouco atrasado é, por causa do trânsito, mas o pouco que eu fiquei eu pude aprender bastante e é isso, vamos juntos, a família toda junta e vamos continuar nessa, nessa pegada aí. Então, tudo bem. Everybody, thank you for all. Good night, for evening, for everybody, pessoal do Brasil. Uma boa tarde, boa noite. Obrigado a todos e eu vou, vou postar depois na comunidade. Grande Valeu, abraço. Um abraço. Tchau, tchau. Obrigado. Obrigado, Al. <risos> bye, bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.